Hey guys, everything new under the sun. I was actually doing a three year, sort of a three year review of my deep cycle batteries and I was searching through my YouTube videos and I recognized that I didn't really do a review of this, not that I can find anyways. So, this is going to uh, suffice as uh, a review. Let me see if I can get a little bit more light on the, on the subject there. So this is a battery, a deep cycle battery from Canadian Tire here in Canada. Made by Motormaster, which is kind of the Canadian Tire brand. And it's called the Nautilus. And it is a Group 27 deep cycle battery. It is an AGM, absorbed glass mat, um, battery. And it is uh, basically pure lead, so you pay quite a premium. This has uh, 90 amp hours of... Uh, deep cycle storage, 190 reserve capacity minutes, and uh, 1,110 marine cranking apps. So if you're using it in that actual marine situation, um, then those numbers are useful for you. If you're using it in an off-grid solar sort of situation, a renewable energy situation, that is really the number that you're interested in, the actual amp hours that uh, it stores. <clears throat> So this is a deep cycle battery. This is meant for you know trolling motors, um, uh, deep cycle sorts of uh, things. And um, <clears throat> this, uh, oh yeah, Nautilus Ultra X XD is the actual name of it. This sells for uh, about three hundred and fifty dollars, I believe. Um, and so it's expensive and you pay for the same for 115 amp hours if you get the uh, standard uh, uh, flooded uh, lead acid deep cycle battery it's it's a motor master it's a nautilus but it's just a standard flooded lead acid um, it costs about hundred and fifty dollars versus three hundred and fifty dollars for this AGM uh, technology as uh, they are trying to sell it so, what is AGM and what are the advantages of it? AGM just means absorbed glass mat. It means that the lead plates um, are uh, kind of covered in a in matted layer which keep the lead on the plates as opposed to falling off and sulfating, basically, if I recall my, my technology there. And so the absorbed glass mat is, uh, is supposed to uh, help the battery last longer than a, a standard flooded lead acid battery where the, the lead would flake off the plates. And this kind of holds it there so when you recharge it, hopefully that lead will reattach to the plates. That's kind of the idea and it is a sealed battery as well which means it's good for uh, going in a camper. And I did have it in uh, a camper as well. That's actually one of the reasons I bought it. Uh, because I wanted it inside a camper uh, where I didn't want any uh, gases coming off it, or uh, very few anyways. And these are these are sealed uh, AGM batteries. These are kind of uh, suggested for use in enclosed spaces, um, non-spillable. I don't know if you can see that in the way. Non-spillable. That's basically what you're looking at um, in terms of putting it inside an RV so that you're not worried about off-gassing and that sort of thing. So that's what it is. And so it's a real fancy deep cycle battery. Again, I hadn't done a review of it, a review video that I can see anyway, so that's odd. Uh, what's nice about it for renewable energy purposes is it's got these uh, butterfly, <coughs> butterfly nuts, whatever you call them there, wing nuts. Um, so it's really easy for plugging in your solar charge controller as opposed to these standard posts which I haven't even taken the plastic off yet of these ones. Um, the, the, the red plastic is on there and the black plastic on these. These are your standard car posts which you would hook up if you were putting it in a, a truck or a vehicle or whatever and, and probably even a, a marine situation. Whereas these are nice for trolling motors. Uh, you just spin this off and put it on. So it's nice to have that extra option that's perfect for renewable energy. Uh, setups and installations. Uh, it, it is a very heavy battery. It is nice that it comes with a handle and you definitely need it. It is it is a beast to carry around. Very very heavy. Uh, it's in a fancy gray plastic box. A little bit fancier than the kind of uh, flooded lead acid which is just a uh, black plastic. This one comes with some you know some strengthening strengthening plastic on the sides of it. I don't know it's just a little bit different. A little, a little bit uh, uh, higher uh, 
production values if you want, uh, uh, construction va construction uh, higher, uh, better, better construction is what I'm trying to say. So that's it. I mean, there's not a lot else to say other than my review of its actual performance. Now I had this directly up against uh, my Motomaster uh, flooded lead acid uh, battery, which was 115 amperes hours versus the 90 amp hours. And this one has started to show loss of capacity already. The I use it in uh, a camper situation where I had I think 120 watts on it and I have drained this one low uh, a number of times. I don't know exactly how many times but I've drained it very low a couple of times anyways. I know they only have so many complete recharges from zero if you want to if you want to suggest that um, because it just it just wrecks them but again the AGM is supposed to uh, help it perform better even after um, some deep uh, discharges so yes I've done that I don't know how many times maybe 15 or 20 times maybe I, I it's hard to say but I'm guessing you know I don't do it every day I, I obviously am very uh, cognizant uh, of the charge level because I don't want to take them under 60% uh, so that I can maximize their life um, but this one along with um, the uh, uh, lead acid the flooded lead acid deep cycle um, basically have started to uh, decrease in capacity after this this one is two years and seven months old I believe my lead acid is uh, three years and maybe four months old um, I forget specifically and um, so it's a little disappointing because this was an extra 200 bucks, 350 bucks versus 150 for the uh, flooded lead acid. And uh, so the, for the extra AGM uh, non-spillable, I don't know if it's worth $200 unless you actually have it in an enclosed situation where your family is, which is where I was using it. So from that point of view, it, it, it made sense to not have the off-gassing of the standard lead acid. But certainly your bang for your buck, your amp hours for the amount of, uh, the, the, for the cost of the thing. I For 150 bucks you can get 115 amp hours versus this battery which is $350 for only 90 amp hours. And I don't see a much more life out of it. They've, they've been treated about the same. The lead acid versus this one. I, I would even suggest that the lead acid in my chicken coop which is also plugged onto solar panels, about 100, 100 watts of it. Um, I, I would suggest that the flooded deep, uh, lead acid deep cycle uh, was actually uh, dealt with more harshly uh, than this AGM. Now for a while I did have this AGM plugged in alongside in a battery bank with the lead acid, which they do suggest you're not supposed to do, not supposed to mix various types because in theory the AGM maybe charges at a different, uh, different voltage, a slightly different voltage and has different you know power curves or charging curves than uh, a flooded lead acid, I, I guess, but in the end, um, <clears throat> they're in the same bank for probably a year's worth of time, 12 months, and uh, and these two, when they when they were in the bank, were never brought, uh, you know, below 60%, um, but in the last year, I have, no, last number of months anyways, I've noticed capacity being lost, and what I mean by that is, uh, I had, like, lights hooked up to it, about 40 watts of LEDs, you, you'd uh, have it recharged all day and it was up to charge it was not accepting any more charge turn your 40 watts of lights on which I have on a little 120 watt inverter and it would go from you know at rest 12.7 uh, volts it would go down to 12.3 12.4 volts which on a battery bank of 200 amp hours you shouldn't see a draw of 40 watts pull it down it should effectively stay at 12.6 100% charge uh, through that test so when that when it when the voltage drops down real quick under under any sort of load, you know that your battery is losing capacity and and uh, and so you're yeah it's about uh, you know that it's getting older, long in the tooth. Now I did uh, I have been trying to charge this with my Noco Genius, which I had in my other video, sort of an update, my three year update uh, for these guys, and um, here it is down here. And you'll notice, I just plugged it on now, it's only getting up to 75%. So the yellow light there on the very bottom is the 75% mark. It's been on this charger for probably four days now, and it's never gotten to 100%. So, and like I say, this battery is only uh, 
2.7 months old. Now it does say 36 month free replacement, but I don't know what that means. Like they, they'll probably put it on their machine and uh, it will come out and they'll say it's fine. So I don't know what I can do. I'm I'm going to just going to keep trying to charge it. Maybe I, I'll probably need the documentation if I can even find it for this, and I'll have to see what the uh, what the terms and conditions are. What I suggest you buy one of these, you know, unless you need a sealed battery, um, I wouldn't suggest paying the premium for this. Get the get the lead acid for bang for your buck, the plain old um, flooded lead acid battery for 150 bucks with 115 amp hours. Um, that is better bang for your buck and ap appears to last the same length, um, if not longer, than this. Uh, now again, the situation, uh, I may have done something to cause issues with this, but I, would have expect I wouldn't have expected to see any capacity limitation. If for another two years, I would have expected a, a solid four years with no noticeable uh, degradation in capacity. So the fact that it's not even charging to 100% now, I don't know what I could have done to it to cause such such trouble. So yeah, I would suggest paying the premium for this unless you have a very specific situation. But these days, if you're going to be spending 350 bucks on a battery, you might as well go get a lithium ion deep cycle battery because that's going to charge more times, it's going to allow you to drain the battery more times without significant uh, trouble with it. And overall, it will be a uh, much better value for the cost, I think, uh, with the new technology of the lithium-ion batteries. They are really nice. So, And that's one of the things I hope to get next. Um, we'll get, get a lithium-ion and use that for my, for my uh, solar power projects. But anyways, uh, I just want to do a, a quick look at the uh, Nautilus Ultra XD. I'm surprised I haven't done a video. I, I absolutely could not find it. So if you're looking at the Nautilus Ultra XD AGM, batteries there's my review of it it's very heavy and it doesn't appear to have much of an extended life over the flooded lead acid uh, i could be wrong but that's been my experience with it in just uh, general usage nothing super super tough you see it's two and two and a half years old and it's just a little dirty it's not like it's scuffed up and banged around or anything and uh you know i've always had solar panels on it so that is it. That is uh, my sort of unboxing, if you will, my introduction to the Nautilus uh, AGM here. And uh, I will have a, a, a bit of a, a three-year update video, I guess, uh, coming out shortly where I take a look at the Nautilus, uh, the, sort of the AGM versus the uh, flooded lead acid. So anyways, I will leave it there. Um, I would do a thumbs down on paying for the premium for this one unless you have a very specific purpose and you can't afford lithium ion which are a bit more expensive per per amp hour thanks for watching guys we'll see you in the next video so thanks for watching the Nautilus Ultra XD review I'm going to just append the uh, Nautilus Marine RV deep cycle this is the uh, flooded lead acid the 150 amp, amp hour battery this is a review I did uh, when I first got it about two years ago um, obviously the, the initial look still applies you can look at it. I looked at the reviews for the Ultra XD, and uh, they were all outstanding. But uh, what I, from what I saw, people only had them for uh, you know two years max in, in the comments that I saw on the Canadian Tire website. So I don't know if that's a, an indicator. But anyways, I would still say for your money, um, this one that you're looking at now is the better buy for the amp hours, but 150 bucks for 150 amp hours, so but a, a little over a buck an amp hour, where the other one's like uh, you know three or four bucks in the amp hour. So anyways, uh, have a look at, at this one as well. And again, thanks for watching. This is my review of my Motomaster Nautilus Marine RV Deep Cycle Battery. Now this is a battery I got from Canadian Tire for 140 bucks. It is 115 amp hours. It is labeled as a true deep cycle. As you can see, deep cycle there. The maker of this and provider to Canadian Tire is Exide, um, and they use the same Nautilus name for their Exide deep cycle battery. Um, and Motomaster just stamps their label on it, as far as I can tell. Anyways, <coughs> this is the largest wet uh, wet cell deep cycle that Canadian Tire sells. It also happens to be the cheapest per amp hour. Um, there's AGMs, uh, absorbed glass mat uh, batteries, uh, you know, for almost twice the cost and less amp hours. 
Um, this one seems to be the cheapest per amp hour and it seems to be a true deep cycle battery. And it's not a starter slash deep cycle or something. So I have high hopes. I've had this for about a year. Um, it's worked in my off-grid chicken house very well. I have a uh, I bought some proper connectors for it, so they're not just duct taped on or something. And you get good connections that way. And it is a, a wet cell, so you see the lids back there a little bit, a little bit dark. I've had good luck with this battery. Now I don't use it a lot. It rarely gets below 80%, um, but I do use it for uh, lighting in the chicken shed. I've got about 90 watts um, charging this up every day. It easily gets charged up every single day. Um, you can see on the uh, on the uh, Tracer 22RN, 2215RN, um, oops, that it is sitting at 12.8 uh, volts, 12.9. Uh, that's with the light on. Um, there's, I've got it uh, the solar panels in series, so it's still drawing in. It's still charging actually, even though it's not real, not real light out. Um, this EP Solar has no trouble charging it with the 90 watts attached. Um, this is a great solar charge controller, by the way. I have another review on that one. But yeah, um, I'll probably get another uh, Nautilus Marine RV deep cycle battery from Canadian Tire uh, for the amp hours. It's the cheapest by far. <laughs> Uh, it's wet uh, cell, so it's, you can do a little bit of maintenance on it, uh, you know, refill the liquids as needed. Although I haven't even checked uh, mine after a year of use. It went through the winter, no problem. Um, I didn't have any issues, so I didn't really insulate it. I just kept it nicely charged up, and I haven't seen any issues. Now, I can't say I know anything about the uh, decrease in amp hours uh, from the battery from use and, and sulfation. Uh, I don't use it really that much to, to tell, to be honest. Um, but in terms of voltage, uh, I see no no dips in voltage there. So it shows really good, and if I turn the light off, uh, it'll bounce back up to 13 volts. So that's it. I would recommend the uh, Nautilus Deep Cycle. It's worked uh, real well for my solar application. It's obviously not a true solar... Uh, system battery, uh, but it certainly works for the backyard hobbyist solar guy.